We've talked about how you can control the amount of light entering your camera by using a combination of aperture and shutter speed, but now let's talk about the third part of the exposure triangle, and arguably the most important, light itself. Hey fellow photographers, what did you shoot today? Now light is a pretty complex subject and we're only going to touch briefly on it today in efforts to sort of learn more about exposure and how it relates to photography. So what exactly is light? Light is electromagnetic radiation that falls within a very specific band of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now when we talk about light we're usually talking about visible light, what we see and perceive as humans to our eyes. These values of light range from wavelengths of about 400 nanometers on the violet end of the spectrum all the way up to about 700 nanometers on the red end of the spectrum and everything in between. And without light, there really isn't anything to take pictures of. As photographers, we're really worried about these two terms, luminance and illuminance. Luminance is the measure of the wavelength weighted power per unit area of light traveling in a given direction. Well, what the heck does that mean? Essentially, what we're doing is we're trying to quantify the amount of light that is traveling through, is emitted from, or is reflected from a certain area. This given area is what sort of our field of view is when we're talking about our eyes, what we see, you know, the luminance of the scene is given by the sort of field of view of our vision. When we talk in terms of photography, we're talking about the field of view of our lenses. So how does this differ from illuminance? Well, illuminance is essentially the measure of light that's incident on the surface. So in the case of luminance, we're measuring sort of reflected light or light emitted, whereas illuminance, we're measuring the light that's actually hitting what we're interested in, hitting a certain area. What's important to remember is that luminance is based off of the properties of whatever we're talking about, what we're looking at, whereas illuminance is independent of that. Maybe some examples would help. The camera that I'm recording on right now is taking into the entire scene and it's measuring the luminance of the scene because what's happening is that the continuous lighting that I have on me right now is being reflected off of all these surfaces and then pointed towards the camera. The camera is reading the light from the angle that the lens field of view captures. But it's all reflective light off of these different lights that I have set up in the studio. On the other hand, if we wanted to measure the intensity of the light, the illuminance of this scene, we would need something like this with an incident meter, we could measure what is the intensity of the light that's hitting the blackboard at this point, or what's hitting my face, or what's hitting my, my shirt. Now we can measure the illuminance of the scene, but that doesn't really tell us anything about the properties of, of the scene itself. For example, this black shirt does not reflect as much light as the blackboard or my face, for example. So we have to take into consideration different measurements of light and how they interpret the scene in order to get proper exposures. Now with aperture and shutter speed, we discussed if you open the aperture, you let more light in. If you close it down, you have less light in. Same thing with shutter speed. Longer shutter speeds mean more light. Shorter times mean less light entering the camera. So how do we change these things with light itself? Well, in a studio environment like this, it's pretty easy. I can just go to these lights over here and I can dim them. I even can turn them off, right? So I can create a different sense or mood and alter the light manually. If I want to add light, I can turn the light back on or add another light source, right? And I can, I can illuminate different areas of the scene by adding light. If I don't want to use continuous light, I can use something like a strobe. So with a strobe, I can have a, a sort of more controlled direct or indirect sort of quick burst of light that registers in this case a flash from a speed light, but we could also use mono lights and strobes and all kinds of studio lighting that give quick intense bursts of light and that gives us different effects. Lighting is everything and I think a lot of photographers shy away from kind of the, the studio lights, whether it be flashes or continuous lighting and a lot of people like to call themselves natural light photographers and they really like natural light photography and that's fine if you do. Natural light definitely has a, a beautiful quality to it and most studio lights are basically trying to mimic that daylight balanced uh, value of light that we get from the sun naturally. But daylight photography has sort of its issues. You can't really necessarily dim the sun on command. You know, we can find shade and we can find those kinds of things and use different reflectors in order to sort of get the light where we want it, but we're still stuck with the source of light being the sun and out of our control. 
So if we need more light outdoors, we're gonna have to bring external lighting sources like the flash, like off-camera lighting, in order to supplement what's already there. So what if there's too much light and we're outside? Well, then we have to use things like neutral density filters. This here is a graduated hard edge neutral density filter. Great for taking sunset pictures because what it's going to do is it's going to dim the light that's coming from the sun while leaving the foreground exposed so that things become more in line and they don't, you know, the sky isn't blown out overexposed and the ground isn't underexposed. There are a lot of different tips and tricks that we can go over when it comes to lighting, and lighting is probably the most important part of photography. I mean, it's in the name, right? Photo, light. So hopefully you can see where we're going with this. We're working towards building the three units of the exposure triangle, aperture, shutter, speed, and light, in order to create perfect exposures for what our artistic vision is of the scene. Now, is there, is there an easy way to do this? Your camera thinks it can predict that perfect exposure because it has auto and program modes. It evaluates the scene as a whole, given different metering modes that you might use, and it picks what it, it thinks is best. However, this might not be what we want to create in our photographs, which is why we're gonna have to get out of the auto and the program modes and use different modes like aperture priority, shutter priority, or even full manual mode in order to tweak those three variables and we're gonna see how they move together and how they have to sort of slide, if one slides up, the other has to slide down. We're gonna talk about tweaking all these three variables to get the look we want and the shots we want and get better photographs. So I hope you can see what we're working towards when it comes to getting better photographs, getting better at our craft, learning the fundamentals of a shutter speed, aperture, and light in order to tweak our photographs, get the looks we want, and be satisfied with the results. We've got a lot more to cover, so if you haven't done so already, please subscribe with notifications enabled to get the latest and greatest videos that come from this channel. If you have any suggestions for future topics, feel free to leave those in the comments. Next time, we're gonna be unlocking the secrets of exposure, so stay tuned, and until then, as always, happy shooting.